Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. I am joined today by Lynette Robinson, and we are talking all about how to make money in a way that feels fun and fulfilling, because let's face it, we forget about having fun in life, and life's meant to be lived, right? So with that being said, Lynette, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. So excited to chat with you. So tell us more about yourself, who you are and what you do. Yeah. Well, thanks first of all, for having me on. I am a business coach and consultant. I specialize in helping women make more money. So increase their conversion rates in a way that's fun, fulfilling, and more profitable, right? Like that's what we're here for. Um, but I got into this work. I think, I, I think it's funny. I was talking to someone about this last night and it's like, I feel like I've lived a thousand lives. I've been kind of a serial entrepreneur. I've owned a brick and mortar business, a number of different online businesses. Um, I've also worked with an international franchising company, um, doing franchisee support. So essentially coaching and consulting our franchisees, um, within that role, I also did product development. Um, and so I have a really broad depth and breadth of experience across multiple different industries. And that's part of what makes the work that I do now so fun because I can kind of pull back. I can see that golden thread that was drawing through everything that I've done up until this point to really help me be that expert at helping draw the gold out of other people. This is one of the things that I say a lot is that Really, at the end of the day, I feel like I am an expert at drawing the gold out of people so that they can really step into their businesses in a way that lights them up, just makes them feel so potent and powerful. Um, And then, of course, I use all of my background and experience in uh, sales and marketing and business to create systems and strategies that undergird that, that really allow women to do what they're amazing at and feel really confident in that because oftentimes like there's just so much going on, right? When you're trying to run a business um, that if you don't have strategies and systems and sequencing in place that matches you and where you're at in your business, oftentimes it gets to feel really heavy and hard and that's not what we want. And that's a lot of what we're going to talk about today is um, how to just tap into your genius, your unique brilliance, your gold, so that you can really create a business that makes you light up and, and is fun and fulfilling, but most of all profitable. Cause like these things are all connected. Uh, so I can't wait for this conversation. It's going to be super fun. Um, and I let's, let's dive in. Yeah. And I love too how you mentioned profitable because at the end of the day, in order to do any type of business, even if it's a nonprofit, you need profit in order to be able to reach others, to do your work, to provide value to others. So I think it's so important that, yes, it needs to be fulfilling, but profitable as well. That is such an important thing that I think moms get stuck on and they almost feel guilty in a way like, Wow. I am starting to make money. Like what, what's happening? But let's yes. dive into this golden thread because yes, we all have that gold within us, but sometimes we forget that it's in there. So can you give us a few t- tips that can help us start to find and dig for that inner gold? Yeah, absolutely. So this is something that I love working with my clients on, especially if they're newer in their business or even just starting out, or maybe you're, you're at a place in your business where you're wanting to pivot or just make your business feel a little bit better to you. What we're going to talk about right now, like get your notepad out or, you know, just perk your ears up because this is, this is the ticket. This is the thing that's going to differentiate you be between you and like everyone else is really tapping into that gold, really seeing like, okay, what is it that makes me and my business unique? And there are a lot of, there are a lot of 
coaches and consultants out there on the internet shouting about how saturated the market is and how much competition there is. And I'm here to call BS because while there are a lot of, like, it is a growing industry. If your online businesses are a growing industry, the coaching industry, consulting, like any of them, they are booming businesses, but this should not be a deterrent. This should make you feel excited because this is telling you that people are excited to buy your products, services, expertise online. This is amazing, right? Um, where people get stuck is that they, they don't tap into the part of them that makes their story really magnetic to people like their people, the people that they're called to serve. And so when you can kind of look back at your life and ask yourself, okay, Question number one, what is something that I have done time and time again for people for free? What or, and, or like, what is something that if a girlfriend or a friend calls me up on the phone and like, I need your advice on blah, blah, blah. What is that? Like, what is, what are those things? And I have a really good friend who she, she launched an organizing business because she realized she, she, and then never dawned on her that her incredible capacity to organize her home and do all this stuff was a unique skill, right? And this is oftentimes how it is. People don't, can't identify in themselves the things that are amazing and brilliant and unique because to you, you're like, well, of course, this just, doesn't everybody do this? And the answer to that question is no, everyone does not do this. And um, I love this story of my, my friend who I've actually started working with as a client, like, you know, she had this ability to just like organize and put systems in place into her house and all this stuff. And she didn't realize that this was something that other people would pay her for. And now she has launched a luxury home organizing business that is thriving and now has other people asking her, Oh, teach me how you've done it. And, and this is what I think is so fascinating because to her, it was like, well, yeah, but she stopped and asked herself this one question. What is the thing that people Oftentimes we'll be like, oh, we can you just like handle this for me? And that oftentimes is is a is like a big indicator. You can't see me waving my arms because we're on a podcast, but it's like it's like that ding ding, like big bright light over your head, like, oh, okay. And so if you can start to just reflect back, at, you know, what are some of the things that other people oftentimes just seek me out for? Um Another thing to kind of ask yourself is when I do something, do hours pass without me even really noticing where you're like, you're just in it. You're like, this is so fun. You walk away from it feeling really energized, really pumped, really excited. Those are indications of things that are special and unique to you that you can work into your business. And what I love about this is that, you know, whether, you know, I've worked with people in e-com, I've worked with people in music, I've worked with people in coaching and consulting, and it doesn't really matter. This principle applies. It's like my, my client who had an e-com business really starting to implement, like, how, how can we make this part of you imbued and embedded into your business so that you start calling in the people who are really connected to that energy, that vibe. And um, I think this is one of those, those powerful things of saying like, oh, I really do have something that's unique. It's, it's like, yeah, sure. Like offer model, look at what's working and selling in the marketplace, but then really commit to making it your own, making it something that you feel like you get up in the morning and you're like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I get to talk about this today. So amazing. And if, if you don't feel like that yet, that's okay. You will get there. Start digging, start asking these questions, start looking to, for the places in your business in your business model where you can tweak to make it feel and look and sound more like you. Because when you can do that, the way that you're going to show up in your business is going to be so powerful. You're just going to be like this beacon of light and hope that just attracts people into your stratosphere with ease. And it's so transformational. It's so much easier 
than we make it out to be. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that a lot of times we want to conform because it comes from this fear of judgment of not being accepted. But when yeah. you harness that unique ability that you have, those things that come to you easily, you are absolutely right. Yes. It's so much easier. It feels mm -hmm. genuine. You are authentic. It's just easier. And then yes, people are drawn to you. You're no longer having to chase and do things that just don't feel aligned. It's easy. And we forget that, you know, how many yeah. times in life, you know, we're just trying to fit in. We're trying to go with the trends. We're trying to conform, but you see so many of the same trend. And then it's like, it almost gets boring. So you just keep scrolling. Like, mm -hmm. no, you have unique value. And so I love you talk about, you know, just digging in to find that. Yeah. And embracing that rather than fighting it. Yes, absolutely. Because I think, and I know that your audience is moms and women. And so I feel like I can say this, we're in a safe space here. It's like, I feel like oftentimes women were so conditioned to be small yeah. and to like not be loud and to not to be too, too much. And I think even when, you've been doing the inner work when it comes to bringing your product or service into the marketplace. I, I see so many people struggle with this. They, they come back to this feeling of like, I don't want to be too much. I don't want to like be too loud. I don't want to, but I'm going to just tell you, like, get loud, get loud. There are people right now. Listen, listen, friend, right now, whoever has this, your earbuds in, there are people right now who are praying, crying, hoping, pleading for the answer that you have locked up inside of you. And they can only hear that message. They can only attach to that hope. They can only see the breakthrough that's coming for them if you will get loud. If you will step into your power, you will step into who you are called to be so that you can empower others to do the same with the product or service that you bring into the marketplace. Like there are people who need you to stop playing small. There are people who need you to get loud with your message. There are people who need you to shine the way that only you can shine because you are amazing and unique and brilliant. And when you stand in that power, that unlocks something so magnificent for the people in your world that see you doing that. It gives them permission to do the same. And it is so beautiful. I'm not here to say that it's easy. <laughs> Or sure. like, it always feels like, woo, sometimes that feels uncomfortable, but it is so worth the work. It's so worth doing. And I think for, for me, one of the things that I have done in my life to help me step into that is get into communities of people who are doing it, you know, masterminds, mentorship, coaching, like just any sort of community where other people are reaching for and crushing goals who are like, just really standing in their truth, it's going to help you up level in a big way and help you feel a lot more confident in on those days where you're like, should I post this? Like, and it's like, yes, yes, you, you should, you should <laughs> just go for exactly. it. Just send it. And that right there, what you just described is the game changer. It is a total game changer. Getting into those rooms with people that challenge you to think mm -hmm. bigger, to dream bigger, to show you that it is possible. Yes. So much of business is mindset and just mm -hmm. stepping out of our comfort zones, which like you said, can be scary. It can be so daunting. <laughs> You know, and so many times, yeah, we keep ourselves small because it's like, oh, who am I? It's those narratives in our head. Well, tell them to, you know, be quiet and I'm going to do the thing anyways. So mm -hmm. what advice can you give our listeners to step into that potential, that role that we know we have value to share? How do we just start doing it? Mm. I love this question. I think one of the key elements to just start doing it is to be committed to inspired, imperfect action. 
And you hear a lot of people out there talking about take, you know, it's just like imperfect, messy action. And then you hear other people saying like, take inspired action. And both of those have unique meanings. Like, you know, just kind of like shoot from the hip and like do the thing and whatever. And then over here in this like camp of like take inspired action, it's like, you know, really lead from your heart and do all this stuff. But I have found that when I have in my own life and when I've helped my clients really integrate these two things that that it's about both inspired and imperfect action, that something else unlocks, something else comes forward where you're really starting to lean into your own intuition that says, I think, I think this is the best next step. And I don't have any of the other steps figured out and that's okay. And so really committing to it, not being perfect and not being all figured out, being very unattached to the how, but being really committed to the destination and the next best step and really training yourself to ask that question, does this feel right for me? Does this feel right for my business? Does this, is, is this the path forward? Because when you <clears throat> can do that, it helps you stay out of that, those feelings of striving and out of those feelings of hustle. Um, before we started recording, it was, we were talking about, you know, hustle, hustle, like these hustle culture. And I have one client who was like, I'm just so done with the hustle till you die culture. I'm just like, I'm done. And I just, I, I loved what she said. I like cracked up. Cause I'm like, yes, there is this feeling out there of you just have to hustle until you die. You just have to just strive and work and whatever. And I think there's a better way. And I think that you tap into that better way when you can start taking action, that imperfect action, but in a way that feels inspired and inspiring to you, where you, you do it and you're like, oh yeah, okay. And then you, you do it again, which isn't to say you're never going to feel uncomfortable. That's, that's not really what I'm driving at. Like there will be moments when you feel uncomfortable, but you can hold space for the discomfort of new and growth and the confidence of this is for me. And I think that as a business person, really learning how to hold space for dualities like that is going to serve you so well, <laughs> because there's so many places where you experience that of like, oh, this is so exciting. And I have no idea what I'm doing, or I, you know, did this cool thing. And you know, like, there's a lot of dualities. And so really starting to hold that space for, yeah, I can feel uncomfortable with growth and pushing out, but being able to identify, is this uncomfortable because I'm stretching or is this uncomfortable because it's not for me? And then holding that confidence in that space that says, I will choose what's best for me because when I choose what's best for me, I can go further faster. So good. And I love how you marry both together because I think so many times we have like the mindset of it has to be one way or the other, but allowing yeah. that space for the duality of it, holding that space and analyzing what is the next best step for you? What mm -hmm. feels good to you? Because this is your business. And that's the beauty of it is that you can run it how you want to. And finding those systems and strategies that you talked about at the very beginning that feel good for you. Just mm -hmm. because everybody else is doing it one way does not mean that that's the way you have to do it. This is your business and you need to be making decisions that are right for you. And yeah, yeah it can be uncomfortable, but just holding that space and taking those aligned actions it creates the confidence. You know, yeah. I love the analogy of, you know, the first time you're ever standing on a diving board, ready to dive into the pool. It's terrifying, you know, mm -hmm. but you do it and you yeah. kind of have fun. And so yes. you do it again and it gets easier and easier and you learn. And then maybe you get really fancy and you can do these flips and, and dives. And there's so much possibility there by you know, just taking the action mm -hmm. and you know, just allowing yourself space to be a beginner. That's okay. Yes. Oh. I think we forget to be beginners sometimes. Yes. And give ourselves space for that. One million percent. Oh my gosh. I could not love what you're saying right now more because 
this is so critical to basically to accomplishing any goal is to allow yourself the space to be a debutante, to be a beginner, to be at the beginning. And here's why, is that most everything in life is a skill. Yeah, sure, some people show up with like a higher baseline, but where you begin does not have to be where you end. You get to decide if you go far or not in a certain area if you will hone that skill set but the best way to hone that skill set to get better at it is to skill build so kind of like scaffold where you master one skill and then you master another skill and you layer on one on top of the other on top of the other until you get to that place where you're like I'm amazing I'm so good at this I'm doing backflips and all the things you know but just like you're saying in your analogy of the diving board you don't start out trying to do backflips. And if you do, what happens? You belly flop. And it's really like not a good time, right? I mean, anyone who's listening, you've yep. been there as a kid and you're like, oh, you have that. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I'm like, no, oh, that stings, right? But if you will choose to allow yourself the space to become an expert at the level that you're at right now, you will ascend so much quickly, so much more quickly, and you will be more agile inside of your business. And when I think, when it comes to systems and strategies, I think there are, there are things when you're new in your business where you're, you're like the whole show, right? I mean, how many of you listeners here are newer in your business and you're like, yes, I do all of the things. And that's okay. And it, the cool thing is, is that there will come a time in your business where you do not have to do all the things celebrate. Yay. And so one of the things that you can do right now is make a list of the things in your business that you want to outsource right away. And it's not that to say that you're not there, you're outsourcing right now. Cause you're probably like, Lynette, I can't afford a VA or whatever. That's fine. But make a list of the things that you love doing in your business and a list of the things that you kind of have to do in your business. <clears throat> and then start strategizing around, like, when can I outsource? But the benefit of learning how to do those things, even if you're like, eh, I don't love this, is that you know how. And that you can then give direction to your team as you progress, as you grow. And <clears throat> so I think it's it's just about, like, giving yourself the space to be a learner, be a debutante, like skill build, and also know that you, if you're, especially if you're new in your business, you will not always be in a place where you have to be the whole show. There's going to come a time sooner than you think where you get to outsource, where you get to bring people into your, your team and into your world to help you really just tap deep, deep, deep into the, the part of your business that makes you just like want to do a happy dance and that like that's the goal right but along the way you can still be having fun as you learn those skills knowing that as you you hit each you know income mile marker that you're that much closer to the goal of saying oh I can outsource this or I can do that I love that such incredible advice and it's true Lynette Thank you so much for taking time to provide value, to help us dig, to help listeners know that there's hope, you know, that yes, one day you will be able to start to delegate these tasks that will happen. Yes. So thank you. Thank you for that. Where can we learn more? Yes. Well, I am always hanging out on Instagram. That's one of my, the places that I enjoy a lot. Um, so come follow me at Lynette Esperanza. There's um, tons of like free content there. And um, I'd love to just be friends, slide into my DMs. We can have a chat, but I would love to invite you to um, a free masterclass that I host just about every month. And you can find that free ticket at successacceleratorlive.com. Inside of this masterclass, we dive deep into all the things, uh, strategy, sequencing, mindset, and energetics to really help you get to that place where you're unlocking that gold inside of you so that you can find that place where you're having more fun, more fulfillment, and more profit in your business. 
Amazing. So be sure to check out that free masterclass. It'll be linked in the show notes. Lynette, thank you again so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. And until next time, mamas, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 